morning. Good morning. Good to see so many smiling faces. It's good to see a pretty fat crowd for uh, Father's Day. Wow, happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. I say happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. You may be seated. You may be seated. But could all the fathers, if you're a biological father, if you're fathering a kid, can you please stand? Can you please stand today so that uh, we can honor you? Fathers, real fathers, fathers of faith, strong fathers, fathers that was counted out, fathers that they said that men that look like me, men that look like us, wouldn't amount to anything. So much pressure. So much suppression, so much force, so much negativity towards us, towards our black men. But today, we rise. I'm so proud of y'all. I'm so proud of y'all. We don't hear it enough. I'm so proud of y'all and the men that you've become. And the men that you are becoming, you can be seated. Because I don't want to shice the true and ultimate father by us standing in his presence. But could you honor our God and our father? Can you honor him? Hallelujah. Can you honor him in his presence? A father who has done exceedingly and abundantly above all we could ask or imagine. A father, hallelujah, a father who has not only been a bridge over troubled waters, but he's been a father who's been in the muddy waters with me. A father, I'm telling you, what a mighty father we serve. He's not only a lily of the valley, you can be seated. He's not only a lily of the valley, but he's been in the valley with me as well. I'm so proud, I'm so honored to worship a God like that who would decide brother Jeremy who would decide to take somebody with such filth and so much in his life and take it and change it and transform it into the man I'm becoming today and I said becoming because I'm not perfect and I'll never be perfect, but I'm fighting and striving now, just like you men. Just like you men that might be listening online. Let's just keep fighting to make God's name proud, to show the world that can, we can be about our Father's business. Thank you, Lord. Father, we come this morning as humble as we know how, Father. Father, casting all my cares and burdens and fears and anxieties upon you, Lord. Father, that you would allow these broken words that you've given me, Lord, to go forth, Father that it might not just sound good, Father, but do some good, Lord, in another man's life who maybe can identify with what you've done in my life, Lord. So, Father, we ask you to have your way, Lord. 
Move by your spirit, Father. That somebody might come running back to you like a prodigal father, Lord. That somebody might come running, Lord God, asking, what must I do to be saved, Lord God? For that's the most important piece, Lord. Father, did you continue to draw us out of darkness into your marvelous light? Have your way, Lord God. Have your way. Move by your spirit. It's by the blood of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that I pray. My soul says, amen. 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 Oh, it's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. My God, my God. Man, I thought this day would uh, never come when I got the call to do this. And it was a fairly short time, but I was like, man, wow, why me for Father's Day? And then I started thinking, why not me? You know, why not me? You know, um, as I was saying, God has just been so good to me. Man, I just can't stop thanking him and praising him, man, for the things and the miraculous changes that he's made in my life. But let's draw our attention to the book of Genesis. If you have your word, your tablet, your cell phones, or whatever you use, if you want to stand and honor God's word, I ask that you please stand. Uh, we're going to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, we're going to start with verses 7 through 9, and then we're going to skip down and read verses 15 through 18. I tend to be in a rush sometimes, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and take my time uh, today. <clears throat> Genesis chapter, chapter 2, uh, verse 7. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then the Lord God, then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. Verse 9, the Lord God had made all sorts of trees grow up from the ground, trees that were beautiful and that produced Produced delicious fruit in the middle of the garden, he placed a tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Somebody say good and evil. Verse 15. The Lord God placed the man in the garden of Eden to tend and to watch over it. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat from the fruit of every tree in the garden except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. If you eat its fruit, you are sure to die. Verse 18, then the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Just right for him. You may be seated. I was thinking in terms of a topic for today, and uh, I scrambled all around and uh, came up with the weight of responsibility. The weight 
of responsibility. When I got the call and I heard of the theme, uh, which was going to be for Father's Day, that uh, our men matter, I started thinking about our men in particular as it is to black men. And it kind of gave me the same ringtone as when I heard of Black Lives Matter. And I really started to ponder and think about our men matter. And I couldn't help but to think in terms of if our men matter, then why do we have so much going on that's up against us today. We have school-to-prison pipeline. We have a state that we live in, Maryland, which is filled up in the prison system of 70%, yes, I said it, 70% of black men, if our men matter, if our men matter, why do we only matter when it comes time to building the country on our backs? Why does it only why do we only matter when we make prisons to house us to bring wealth to a country? Because they take us and we build things for our country and the wealth of our country get richer as we continue to decline. But the more I thought about that and the oppression and suppression that's on us, I thought about if our lives matter, I believe that our lives have to matter to us first. Our lives have to matter to us first. We have to start loving each other. We got cut down on that black on black crime. Yep, that's right. I, it, ain't no cut cards about it. We got some things in our lives that we need to get straight if we go look for another society or another race of people to look at us like we really do matter. Because the message that we really given is like, we really don't matter to each other. And I think until we come together and take on a burden of responsibility, not only as fathers, but as a race of people, that is willing to leave the 99, that's right, in the church, if we're going to be disciples, he tells us that we must do what? Go ye therefore and make other disciples. We got to get our hands dirty a little bit, saints. We got to go from behind these walls and go out and do our very best to reach one, to teach one. I learned it this way. You can give a man a fish. That'll feed him for a day. But if you teach a man a fish, that'll feed him for a lifetime. Because he will become not dependent on a system that is designed and strategically we see set up to fail us in the food stamp system. All of that stuff is a place that we become dependent upon a system where we need to become dependent more upon a source and in our source, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The burden of responsibility.
There's a weight and a burden of responsibility when so much expectation is put on us and we have to fight through so much stigma and pain. I remember when I was growing up, I thought I was super cool and suave. I used to have the two hoops, the earrings. And uh, I, th I thought I had it going on. But I had braids at one time. And that was when my life really was starting to transition. And even then, I was become a good, good person and was feeling good about myself. But when I would come around certain people, their purses would get clenched. I would get looks like people was fearful of me. And I didn't start taking out the hoops and taking out the braids for the mere fact of what others thought about me, but I took it out because I looked in the mirror one day and, and I, and I self-checked myself and I said, why do, I mean, this, this is a fad and, and I'm cool and all that, but why do I really need that? I don't need the attention that I used to get from females, from people. I don't need that type of attention I'm talking about the weight of responsibility of living through my life without worrying about what others really think about me. I want to tell you, man, we have some strong black fathers, regardless of what the stats might say, regardless of what people might say. We got some strong black fathers. We have some strong black men of faith. We have some strong black families. Regardless of what some might look like. Black men, stand up one more time for me. Just stand up one more time for me. Shout out with me. I want you to say it loud. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. No, I'm serious. I'm serious because if we're going to be in the skin we in, we got to be proud about the people who God created us to be. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. I ain't hear nothing, man. Is it uncomfortable for you? Well, come, hey, hey, thank you, Carlos. Say it loud. There you go. There you go. I like how that sounds. Say it loud. That's much better. That's much better. That's much better. When we look, when we look at the Genesis account, we can clearly see how much men mattered to God. We can see it. It's all over the Genesis account of how much men matter to God. Prior to God creating us from the dust of the ground, right, he breathed his breath into us and we became living souls. God had already prepared all the resources we needed ahead of time. Right? That's, that's how much we matter to God. That before he even went to the dust of the ground and he took this dust. Imagine dust, right? It's not like it's a ball of already put together dirt. But dust is like particles. If I throw the dust in the air, it's going to just disperse. But God loved us so much did he took this dust and put it in his hand and started forming it. And I started imagining in my mind dust in his hand that he probably like took some spit and spit on it so it would all come together. This is how much God really loves 
the man. He loves us so much that he did, I'm sorry, mothers, I'm sorry, women, but uh, he loved us so much that he decided to make us first. <laughs> yes, he did. Look, look, I, look, I didn't say it. Uh, that, he said he made man, right? Adam. He made Adam. <laughs> oh, come on, fathers. Come on, fathers. <laughs> the, the other interesting thing is that um, God spoke everything into existence prior to him uh, forming Adam. He spoke everything into existence. But because man mattered so much, he wanted to do something significant with man. He wanted to separate man from all his other creations. He wanted to separate man from how he had spoke light. But all of that stuff he had spoke was the resources and everything he had placed before us, before he would, was going to bring us on site. The mere fact that he created us first speaks volumes as far as us as men taking on the burden of responsibility in leadership. In leadership. We have to fight. Yes, we got some good men that's in position. And it's not just men that come to church easy step, uh, but um, some men that come to church still ain't in position of leadership, and we go just tell the truth, because I know some brothers that's really around the church, but they display a manner of leadership that sometimes I don't see in the church. But I know that ain't happening in First Christian because we got some strong men of faith up in here, up in here. A burden and a weight of responsibility. Verse 8, then God placed Adam in the garden he had planted, right? So that's how God is. God gets everything ready for us. When he gives us a vision, when he gives us a plan, God gets everything ready for us, and sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees. But God makes that provision for us. This Father's Day, this Father's Day, I said I was going to take my time because um, I'm a Russian type of guy and I got this busy spirit about me, man. I be ripping around doing all sorts of stuff, but I'm going to take my time today. I'm going to take my time. This Father's Day is about life and realizing that God has supplied everything, absolutely everything according to his riches in glory. But we have to continue to press and pray and remember that everything we need for life, L-I-F-E, for life, is really already inside of us. Thank you, Oompas. If you're listening, thank you, Oompas. Um, my, my cousin Oompa started a program, and it's called LIFE. And LIFE stands for look inside for everything. Look inside. Everything that we need, God has already provided. 
regardless of what the world might tell you, regardless of what your baby mama might tell you, that you'll never be nothing and you'll amount to nothing or anything, life brings about a change in this journey. We go from journey to journey, from life to life. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Right? So it's a process that we have to continue and continue renewing renewing ourselves and speaking positivity in ourselves first to let us know that we are good fathers, even in the midst of our pain, even in the midst of not being such a good father. When we start speaking life and pulling life from inside of us, we will become productive. We will become better citizens of society. Verse 15, here is Adam's first responsibility in the garden, to tend and to watch over it. To tend the garden and to watch over it. Responsibility comes with accountability and obedience to the weight of the responsibility. So when we're not responsible, there's consequences to our action. Right? It's consequences to our actions. So when we are not in our rightful place, oftentimes we make bad choices and bad decisions. But that doesn't define who we really are. We in a process. Then in first, verse 16, God warned Adam. There's a warning, right? God never put us out there in a, in a place and not let us know if there's something that we need to be aware of, right? So he tells Adam to not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So God told Adam two things, what to do and what not to do. Two things, what to do and what not to do. What to do to tend and watch over it. Number two, do not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But wouldn't it be just like us? <laughs> wouldn't it be just like us to be like, yo, like, why God, like, uh, try and tell me, like, don't eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, like he want to keep it all for himself, like, like why in the world is he telling me, like, don't eat from this tree, why he trying to keep, keep secrets from me, but yet, he done gave you everything else in the God, all the beautiful trees, all the fruit that made all the provision for you, but yet, we always seem to want more. We seem to not be satisfied with everything God has already provided. But what is responsibility? What, what really is responsibility? For a working definition, we're going to go with this. A particular burden of obligation upon one who is responsible and accountable, accountable for something. I have a friend. I have a friend, and uh, we grew up together, and... Uh, When he was born, his mother didn't name him. And uh, 
when he found out when he went trying to get his birth certificate and stuff, and uh, he found out that his name was John Doe. His aunt raised him. In and out of prison. And oftentimes when we talk, he tell me about responsibility and how difficult it is and how his parent, his mom and his sister and others tell him he just need to take responsibility. And he told me when we was talking, he said, he said, step, uh, man, I can't handle this responsibility thing. He was like, um, I'm about to commit a crime so I can go into prison because that was his place of comfortability. That was his place. Sad to say, but that was his place of really feeling love because when he was telling me about the differences of being in prison and being out in society, he was like, man, it's just too much. I can't take it. So I'd rather go into a system that was designed for me, school to prison pipeline, a system that was designed for me, I have become at a place where it's comfortable for me. That's what I said, man. I was like, wow. Man, you institutionalized. I didn't say that to him, but I was like, I just hugged him and said, man, I, I, I love you. I don't understand, but I love you. I said, but I can, I can relate. I can relate in the sense of responsibility because I grew up in a family with eight sisters, no brothers, and I'm, and I'm the youngest. Spoiled rotten. I think that's the first time I ever admitted to that. People tell me, I bet you were spoiled rotten. I was like, what? Man, I took care of them. They was glad I came on the scene. I mean, what you mean? Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, um, eight sisters and no brothers. Spoiled rotten. Got everything I wanted. And didn't have to do much for it. Now, I'm not saying that my father didn't teach me responsibility. I had an awesome father. I had an awesome father that taught me responsibility, but I chose to do something different. But I can imagine, I, mean, I think about my dad all the time before I came on the scene, that like living with all them uh, ladies. I was like, man, when he, when he seen me, he probably was like when Adam seen Eve, he was probably, he probably looked at me and said, Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Lord, have mercy. He has finally arrived. I'm sorry, sisters. I know he loved y'all and uh, whatnot, too. But I'm going to tell you, man. Woo! In the skin I'm in. God loves us so much, he has to discipline us like he did Adam. But he loves us so much, after Adam fell, he still made a way for us in the means of relationship with him through the second Adam, known as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? 
So God is, man, he loves us so much that he said, I already know you're going to mess up. I already know you're going to fall. So I'm going to make something else. I'm going to make another person because I know you still need somebody to identify and be in a relationship with me. He loves us so much that he continues to make a way and speak to our life so we can become in an intimate relationship with him. That's all he really wants. It's our worship. That's all he really wants is our worship. And for us to be in an intimate relationship with him, not that we want to ask the pre people and the people that we're close to for all the answers. God wants us, Pastor Queen, to be dependent upon him and to be dependent upon him only. And then other resources. But he is the true and living source to this thing called the weight of responsibility. Let me tell you, I wasn't always a strong father. I really wasn't. I bet you if you ask my kids, if you ask them, I guarantee you they're going to tell you, man, he was an awesome father. That sounds good. But in reality, in the reality that I'm living in, I understand the mere fact that I didn't do a lot of great things because I lacked responsibility. I lacked responsibility. I squandered it chasing after crazy women that ain't want me for nothing but one thing, chasing after drugs, chasing after everything that my father said not to do. Not to do. I focus more on the not to do than what to do. Right. Just like that. But I realize that his grace, his grace, <laughs> not Tony Grace, not PJ, but his grace is sufficient for me. Why? I'm glad you asked. Why? Because his strength is made perfect in my weakness. I realize that. I realize that. I had to go through just what I had to go through. I had to put my family what I put them through. I don't always know how the scrambled eggs come together. I know that what they look like before I start cracking them up, mixing them together. But once they become scrambled eggs, I don't know what it all looks like and what God wanted and why it happened and why I had to go that route and why I chose that. But all I know is God worked it out. That's all I know is God worked it out. I haven't always been a person of strong faith. My story reflects that. Strong faith. My faith still worries sometimes. But I pray and I press. I believe what I don't believe. <laughs> right? I believe what I don't believe. That's how crazy, like, faith gets for me sometimes. Like, I, I believe what I don't believe. I'm like, Lord, you tripping right now. Like, what? And... But I believe it, and I go with it. I just go. He said, do it, and I, I go. I try to be obedient to the best of my ability. That's it. Because if not, the weight of responsibility, not doing it, carries consequences. Point blank period, consequences. But one thing I do, one thing I know for certain, I always had a strong family. 
And my strong family was based around one word, love. My family loved me beyond what I had become. They loved me and supported me. I had people loving me and telling me, I'll love you before you, until you love yourself. And I'm like, you tripping, man. I love myself. You know, that's the type of stuff they was telling me up in AA and NA and stuff. Oh, step, come over here. I'll love you until you can love yourself. And I'm like, man, look, I love me some me. But my actions wasn't showing it because I was all caught up in self. We're talking about strong fathers, strong faith. I'm so glad for change. I'm so glad for what God is doing in our lives as our men matter. That's right, as our men matter, as we journey and we progress from strong fathers to strong faith and strong families. Yes, just like that. Verse 18, God knew that it wasn't good for me to be alone. So he made a helper just right for me. Right? Somebody suitable just for me. I couldn't be a father if it wasn't a mother. <laughs> so thank God for the one he chose for me. And then she identified some things in me that when I was in my worst position in the world, that she loved me beyond my foolishness. She loved me beyond my mess. She loved me when I was in the pig pen. She loved me when I was squandering everything. And I'm going to tell you something, fathers. That was the first encounter with Jesus that I had. Why? Because she loved me when I wasn't lovable. She loved me unconditional. Based on every condition possible, she was supposed to be gone. My family even told her, look, Tony, um, baby, step don't mean no good for you. Won't you just keep, whoop, keep it moving? But she saw something in me. Like how God viewed me. Yeah, beyond all the mess. And loved me right at my core where I was. And today, I'm proud. I'm black and I'm proud to say, I love me some her. I'm going to tell you, boy, I'm going to tell you, boy, only if you really knew the stories. Whew. Some think she's crazy. Good Lord, have mercy. Thank you for her. My God, my God. I had a strong father, man. I really had a strong father. It really gave me direction. A man full of wisdom and love. A father that, just like uh, Adam, was told what to do and what not to do. I chose what not to do. And I'm so glad that before my father passed, on Christmas Eve or early Christmas morning. Before my father passed, 
he got the opportunity to see the change in his son. If we wait around long enough and stop judging our men for every mistake they make, if we stick around long enough and keep praying and pressing, because everybody has a responsibility in this manhood thing. All we need is a little bit more encouragement sometimes. All we need sometimes is another little push. We don't need to consistently hear that, oh, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you need this, you need that. We already got enough as black men living in this world, living in this society. We already have enough weight of responsibility. We just need y'all to love on us just a little bit more. If you could receive that message today, if you could stand to your feet. That's all I got. That's all I got. You know what's so amazing that, like, I know it had to be God. I know it had to be God, right? Like, I'm, I'm up here speaking today, and I put my phone on vibrate, right? And for some reason, I'm up here, my dad gone, phone in my pocket, going off. I'm like... That must be God calling me again with another assignment. Um, uh, man, I'm telling you, man. Um, I don't know what else to say, man, but I love y'all fathers. No disrespect to you, brother, because we brothers together and brothers forever, regardless of the skin we in. I love you just like I love my black brothers. I love you. No disrespect to you at all from what you heard, but if our men matter, we got to do better. We got to show it as a society. And, 